What's up, everybody? Dealing with a chilly afternoon. Hope you're all doing all right. We'll get started here in just a minute. Remember, you guys are almost out of time if you haven't started your miniature for the big 150 paint 33 mini giveaway. If you're on Facebook, you can type in haunted mini painting competition, I believe, and it'll pop up. You can also check my Facebook page. You'll see all the info you need to get started there. Uh, but yeah, I really don't, I, I don't feel like there's, <laughs> there's not going to be a lot of entries, so... If you're trying, if you think you got some skill, now everyone in the world who sees the uh, entries is allowed to vote on who wins, so it's not my decision. Uh, so if you think you got some skills, you got to throw something together. That's that's 150. Pa it's like $500 worth of stuff. So, but I mean, I mean, you know, people don't people don't have to get it if they don't want it. Definitely check that out if you're interested. Submissions are due by midnight on Halloween, so you are running out of time. You better hurry. Finish up another month on Patreon as well. Remember, you can check all that out. Patreon.com slash studio. We can go ahead and crack this off here. Hello. Here we are. We're alive in the universe. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Oh, let me... uh. Let me get rid of that guy right there. There we go. Sorry, I got treasure chests in the way. See you later, treasure chests. I gotta boot it and scoot it. So today, of course, we're painting up our metal survivor here. Yoink. Should be pretty fun, relatively simple. Got a good face for painting on it, though. Do love the sculpt. Definitely a lot of fun. Over the weekend on Patreon, we had fun painting up uh, the Andromedan Queen. This is a Patrick Keith sculpt. Um, you can see her staff is perpetually bending back. <laughs> didn't didn't do the hot water trick long enough. But we had fun painting this up. We did some OSL on it. Um, some different techniques too. So like doing OSL on metallic paint isn't uh, 
isn't as straightforward as you would think, but it turned out pretty good. Um, but yeah, we had fun, had fun painting that up. I was feeling super sick all week last week, but I am doing better now. And then on Patreon as well, the Atelier tier, we started adding final colors to this bad guy, and then we selected the next miniature we're working on. So if you've been interested in these paint-alongs we've been doing, uh, you do we do one hour a week, uh, pretty much, until the projects are complete, step by step, all the way through. This was the last one that we worked on. And so he, this, this upcoming Wednesday will be the last time we work on him, and then we're working on a large 3D printed miniature next. So that one is gonna be a, a lot of fun, but that's really all, all that's been up around here. Today, uh, I'm, I'm thinking we'll be just fine. I hope, but there's no way to tell. Um, we're in the middle of a big old ice storm currently. So do keep that in mind if uh, all of a sudden my connection disappears. It's it's not the internet. I had fiber installed last week, so that's that's no longer the issue, but um, I can show you here. I could bring it up on, on screen, but this is outside my window. I took this picture a couple minutes ago and we've already had the power go out. Um, once and it came back immediately so even if it happens we should we should be good but uh the real threat is the rest of the day into tomorrow night because this isn't going to be stopping until then so they're expecting like an inch of ice so rest in peace to all the trees because they're not going to make it but either way hopefully we're fine but just in case i disappear right it's because that's what's going on all right, so first thing we're gonna get started doing here today, let me grab our Noir Black. I wanna do a, you know what, let's do his, I'm just deciding on, deciding on our look here today. I'm thinking we do like a nice orange hoodie, khaki brown pants, white undershirt, and then the rest is history. So. We can go ahead and get started on that. Let me grab, grab a little handle here. Okay. Now then, next Monday, uh, we're gonna get started on the Cyber Police. The Cyber Police painting kit, so that's exciting. And then, um, oh, well, now I'm trying not to interrupt Justin at all because he is working, but um, I will I will ask him a question here. Let me kill the music so you can hear him, okay. So I will ask the question, Justin, since things are being sent to my house, does that mean we can say something about January? Uh... Uh, that's a great question. Let's, <laughs> let's wait one more week. Okay. <laughs> all right, we're waiting a week. There's, all right, there you go. There's there's our nebulous hand. That gives you something to look forward to as we start the Cyber Police uh, kit next week. So, all right, so first thing I'm going to do, I would like to take, let's see what we got. It wasn't, uh, that wyvern color was involved, right? Where, where are we? Where'd you go, buddy? Right here. I'm pretty sure I've had this open here. Oh, what, what, why we're in leather? Yep, here we go. All right, so I'm gonna take this color, I'm gonna give it a spin. Okay. Hey, Andre's here. Can't wait to see the paints that come with the next, yeah, I don't remember. Uh, I mean, I know I could look at the list. Honestly, um, and I have them all in a bag, but it's in my closet put up out of the way. So I wish I could get them for you I've got I've got the miniatures sitting next to me here, of course So I'm gonna take the wyvern leather color I'm gonna make a little wash out of it Looks chilly. Yeah, it's really cold you missed you missed the ice storm photos but We're in the middle of a ice storm right now all day today So I'm gonna take this color and wash it and I want that to be a little bit thicker here. A little bit more pigment than that. Okay. I don't think it's gonna make it to Dallas at all. Um, really Southwest and West Oklahoma had it the worst. 
uh, the metro area is is just like right in the not not a, not good section, but like um, west of the metro area and everything like that here in Oklahoma at least. Uh, you know they're gonna have an inch of ice over an inch of ice, no power, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're hoping for the best here. Our biggest our biggest challenge is just gonna be what do we have for dinner? But I have some uh, some wintry weather ideas. All right, so we're gonna start off dark brown with this as we work our way up, but should be relatively simple. Yeah, Sydney didn't go into work today um, because of the weather itself. Let me pop this up one. I feel like it's a little bit dark. There we go. Yeah, she didn't go into work today, and then tomorrow, obviously, uh, we'll probably be called off too. For safety. All right, so we're gonna take bugbear fur. Imagine too, Josh, if you would, like all the kids in the counties up there. No, they're not even getting snow days because uh, yeah, they're used to virtual. Yeah, and they usually. I think the kids go to school here on uh, Wednesday and Friday. So yeah, they're, they're, they're not getting any uh, fun days off. All right, so I'm gonna mix this in. Now, I'm not going directly with an orange first. I'm gonna highlight up with this color because it's already a nice sort of like yellowish, whitish ivory tone. And then we'll glaze our orange brown on top and it should look pretty good. So I'll get it nice and close here. It'll be nice working on this miniature after fighting with our potato zombies for the last two weeks. But I think they all turned out really, really cool. And I've seen some of the zombies as well. You guys sent me some of the photos of your paint jobs and they look sweet, so. Definitely good job. So I'm just taking this color, highlighting it up, wherever sort of our base highlights would begin. Thank you, Chewy, for the good old Reaper sub here. Remember, you can always subscribe to the channel for free if you have Amazon Prime or for whatever tier you'd like to subscribe for. Just hit that sub button and give, a, and give it a look, see, and see what it says. If you do use your Amazon Prime, just make sure. Just make sure uh, that you're renewing it if you'd like. It doesn't do that automatically for you. That's the only thing it doesn't do. It'll do your taxes. It'll it'll do your laundry, but it won't won't renew. So. I'm gonna highlight this up a little bit more. There we go. So it'll be good for our first little highlight system. Ash, the serial hobbyist, who looks like they're new around here, says, do you use the triad system? Not in any of the Miniature Monday stuff. So the Miniature Monday painting is different because we only ever use um, really 10 colors. Uh, but every month, right, we sell a kit of miniatures and it comes with eight paints. Um, so we always use a limited palette uh, whenever we're doing Miniature Monday stuff. Um, and even in my own painting, right whenever I am working on whatever else I'm working on. Uh, I only use 32 colors, 34 colors, something like that. So I don't really use any systems like that just because the way that I paint, um, the people that are familiar with Miniature Monday and my painting style now um, definitely can kind of understand why I don't necessarily do that, just how I apply the paint and do certain things. But um, I'm a big fan of the gold non-metallic metal triad kit. I think it's pretty good. Um, and I know a lot of people like the uh, flesh triad as well. Unless you're talking about the clear triad packs, then by all means, yeah. <laughs> Everybody knows I'm a sucker for the uh, clear pigments. Okay. 
Okay. So we've got those first highlights cranked on there. So I'm gonna add more of this color, the bugbear. Pretty much a brush tip full into the previous section on the palette. Add a little bit more water. Let's see, is that good? Eh, do a little bit more water. There we go. Not necessarily a glaze, but I wanna be able to apply it nice and thin. And we're just gonna continue pushing the paint up, literally pushing it up physically to get it to dry and taper exactly where I want it to so I can kind of create these textures in the fabric that make sense with our lighting. You know, if he's rocking a, a fleece hoodie here in the apocalypse. So you can see I'm pulling it down to the uh, the bottom here of the sleeve, this little corner. And that's really just to give more dimension to the sleeve itself. I'm not gonna highlight that up any further, right? But that just helps, you know, illustrate the fact that you got that going on in the hoodie itself. And then we're just gonna move over here. What is the clear triad pack? Uh, they just sell a three pack of the clear paints. It isn't necessary. It isn't like a triad in the traditional sense, but it's just labeled as a triad. Which I'm sure that's the that's the fabled uh, pack that's coming out with the phthalo green. It'll be phthalo blue, phthalo green, and the clear orange because that was the three pack. Improver, sealer, and primer? What are you... What are you asking? Improver? I don't use any flow improver. Sealer? I use Vallejo Mecca Air. That's pretty much the best varnish on the market. Oh no, you're asking about the clear triad. Sorry, I already... I literally just answered what that was. <laughs> I'm confused. All right, so we're gonna continue going around here. Moving to the back of the arm. Top of the hood. Top of the hood to you there, Andre. I know Andre's in the chat, he said hello. Oh, shouldn't the inside of the hood be darker? If it's fleece, that means the interior portion is always that like duller color. There we go. We'll leave we'll leave the inside of the hood a darker color to help represent that. Is anyone else having issues with the network? Uh, it's not coming from us. So that would be your connection today. Even though, obviously, uh, I had my fair share. But we're rocking at zero drop frames. Perfect frame rate forever over here today. In Ice Stormland, knock on wood, of course. I don't want to jinx the stream. The worst part is uh, having to take the dog outside. <laughs> No, yeah, it's, it's smooth on my end. Now, I, I will say that with this particular show, we push out really high bit rate for as much sharpness as possible. So um, if your personal internet connection is a little on the, uh, potentially on the slower side, you could get some buffering or network issues because you know, we're, we're pushing out that. We're trying our best to basically push out the closest thing to 4K, so. Sorry. <laughs> Upside of things, though, is the VOD should be perfect. 
um, so there shouldn't be any viewing issues there or on YouTube. Um, conversely, you could change the quality on your end if you if you go to the settings in the bottom right and you change it from auto to like uh, maybe 720 or 480. That should fix your issue too, potentially. Also, if you're on your phone. Yeah, that would be a that'd be an issue. Yeah, if you're watching on your phone, you're in, and you're not in like a five bar area, you could experience bitrate issues there too. Since this is such a simple miniature today, that's why we're just taking our time, making things look very nice. Cause yeah, this this kind of mini I could get painted in in like forty five minutes. So we're definitely in enjoying our time here. Over this shoulder. Now this did have a mold line. I tried to file down. It was just such a strange angle. I couldn't quite hit it correctly. But it didn't. It isn't too distracting. And we'll go one color brighter before glazing on top. And then we'll highlight directly with that mixed with like Maiden Flesh or something bright for our final, final highlight on the hoodie. This is like a Carhartt hoodie at this part, at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna go now directly with that bugbear color. So we're just saturating this up. This will be where it's more orangey than anywhere else on the hoodie after that orange brown glaze. So that's all I'm paying attention to is how bright and where. Imagine having skill. It's, it's, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I've been painting for nearly 25 years. Now I've only been at the skill level that I'm at right now, today, right? I mean, it's a day by day, incremental thing. You just gotta keep on painting. Just gotta keep on going. All right, so now I'm gonna make a little lazy glazy out of our orange brown. If you wanna be a real hero, you can use clear orange. You can use spire orange. Uh, you could probably use, I mean, there's all kinds of oranges you can glaze on top. For great success. This orange is pretty muted in the grand scheme of things. That's why we're gonna go back up with Maiden Flesh. But, so, I always put water out on the palette, right? Like we're making a wash. Add the color to it. You could use this as a wash, but that's not what we want. We're just gonna 
do it on the tip of the brush and then apply it evenly all over everything. So I'd like to do it in sections that are kind of cut off points. So you can see I'm doing the bottom part up to the armpit there and I'm just putting this all over every little section. Up from the shadows as well because I know that that pigment will dilute our shadows slightly. But you can see as it dries already, it's tinted that into this nice sort of autumny color. Very similar to the hoodie I'm wearing right now, actually. Huh, are we cheating by doing that? <laughs> it's me. It's me, I'm, I'm the one surviving the apocalypse. It's, it's me, this is the miniature I've been waiting to be my whole life. Do you know what's inside the suitcase? It's all my miniatures and paints that I decided to save because for whatever reason, I thought they would have value. I'm <laughs> just kidding, it's Justin's head. Uh, you know, but he's a zombie, so I'll clarify. I didn't kill Justin, right? It's He got turned into an apocalypse zombie, and I decided, hey, if, they, if there's a, a vaccine, they come out with a cure, or if there's a Futurama head in a floating jar scenario, right? We have him covered, I, you know? So that's, that's my sidekick I bring through the apocalypse. The disembodied voice of Justin just floats in every situation. Life or death gasoline rates, and they just hear, uh, your connection's timing out on us, Josh. All right, so we have this nice, really, really rich hoodie here. So now I'm gonna take that maiden flesh. We're gonna, we're gonna do a little, little highlighting. This guy's pretty much wearing my outfit today if we're gonna do khaki pants. Other than the mini mini painting studio beanie. All right, so I'm gonna add some of the maiden flesh here. Boom, look at that, we have that nice, nice pale, very thin orange here. We're gonna do some final highlighting. So I'm just gonna be pulling it up on all of our highlights here towards the edge. Look at that, look how nice that looks. Real fleece hours only. He's like, I got this at Sam's. Or for those that don't have Sam's, I got this at Costco. Is there a third bulk store that I don't know about? I know Sam's and Costco are the ones, but there's probably some tertiary competitor out there. See, let's hit the shoulder, or not the shoulder, my bad, elbow. Top of the shoulder there. So we got that. These little arches here, do top of the hand, edge of the hood. I actually love painting modern themed minis. I don't know why, it's something about just painting the clothes it seems to be um, satisfying. Okay, moving on to this side. Other elbow here. Let me move up. Other elbow, back of the arm. Hoodie season. I think that's it. I think we're cool. I think we're cool on our hoodie. Looks pretty good. All right. Khaki pantalones. <laughs> so let's start with basic dirt. Let's do some basic dirt pants here. A little bit of water on the palette, prep the palette space, boom, get the paint on there, there you go. And a nice singular application. 
I've got my apocalypse dockers on, boy. Ready to go trekking. He stole these pants from a Coles. Beep, beep, boop, boop. You let that dry. Too bad there's no zipper sculpted on there. It'd be nice. Just a nice little zipper. Just a little zipper on the left and right hand side. But I know that would be a pain to do in green stuff. I mean, it wouldn't be too insane, right? It would be the same width probably as this section right here. And then they would take their sculpting tool and do a little dash every step of the way. I'm gonna take wyvern leather. I'm gonna take the basic dirt. I'm gonna mix the two together. I'm gonna add a little bit of that maiden flesh right here. We'll do the wood on his zombie greeter. Oh, a little bit of flashback there hiding from me. Well, I'm gonna hide it from the world. How does that sound? <laughs> we'll just we'll just ignore that. And then what we got uh, is that wood or is that metal? That's metal. Okay. So then right here, a little bit more. Okay. So now uh, we're gonna take this same color and we're gonna use the Maiden Flesh to highlight it up, the basic dirt, sorry. We're, we'll just see what that color looks like. I, I don't really know what it would look like. But either way, we'll see. Just seeing what's happening here. Oh, there you go, so the uh, the that's funny um then cyber police set is live right now so if you guys go to the reaper website you can buy the cyber police kit it is available there are your colors gem purple imperial purple uh ashen blue sparkling blue faded khaki explosion orange and gnome flesh and morning after blue so there you go for you for everybody that was wondering uh, about the next kit. So if you're wanting to get it so we can be ready on Monday, there you go. All right, so we got the next color here. Ah, oh, okay, all right, all right. This color's all right. I did throw some more miniatures for sale up on my website over the weekend as well. I know one of the sets sold. If you're interested in those, you can check out minipainting.studio slash store. Is this paint? Yes, it was, okay. Maybe, there's like a, a little dot on there. So I'm just applying this color over any of the areas. Like I love painting pants like this, right? With a bunch of folds. Fabric is probably my favorite thing to sculpt. Fabric that's not um, flowy, right? Like not soft fabric, but any fabric that's got sort of these rigid creases, anything like that, I, I love painting. It gives you such a good opportunity for light, shadow, highlighting, all that stuff.
Okay. Another brush tip of the Maiden Flesh. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of that bugbear. Wait, whoops. A little bit of the bugbear color in there too. There we go. So just pulling that highlight up towards the knee, right? Because it's peeking out from underneath his body in terms of the lighting. Let me fix the tip of my brush here. Just being subpar. There we go. Then down here, so not necessarily right above it where it's brighter, right? Because his his knee is at an angle. So if you look at the knee, right, right up underneath it will be darker. It's not, it's being obstructed by the top of the knee. So we highlight this up. back of the calf and right there is sort of where the ankle's at probably highlight that up okay on to the back meteor part of the thigh at the top back of the thigh back of the knee down here above the ankle onto the ankle towards the ground highlight all of that up this leg all the way we have a nice flat surface there so it's gonna be catching much more of the light the ice storm that's going on right now reminds me of when we moved oh my god this tree is literally sinking further and further in my backyard um, it reminds me of when I moved here uh, originally back in 2007. Um, there was a huge ice storm, and we literally couldn't get our possessions moved into the house out of the moving truck for like five days. So that was really cool. But it was a similar amount of ice, so I'm hoping it isn't like that again, but... What I did, I just re-added sort of like a middle tone there because it was a little bit too sharp of a difference. There we go, that works better for me. Looks nice. The storm's not the bad part. Well, it's the exact bad part. <laughs> that's, that's why the power goes out. All the ice accumulating tears down the power lines and the trees. I'm not happy with the uh, inside of that leg there. Let me. Okay, so I'm relatively pleased here with our pantalones. Looks pretty good. Looks really good, actually. Very pleased. So uh, let's do the white shirt, wowie wowie. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take our maiden flesh, I'm gonna take some of the bugbear color, mix it in there, and that'll be our, our base color for the shirt. I feel like that works, works pretty well. I 
And it may be a little bit too bright, but we'll see. If I did it thin enough, then the zenith all underneath will just kind of do its thing. But yeah, what we'll do, we'll just do this all the same color, and then we'll just glaze some jet shat glaze some shadows, <laughs> glaze some shadows. There you go before highlighting back up. So I'm just gonna push this in. Just make sure we got good coverage here. A little bit more. Okay. Just a little bit further into the neck. Okay, so uh, let's take, actually, you know, it's really, let's just take that basic dirt color, very thin, which I've got mixed up here, to a glaze. I'm just gonna take it around the edges and into the shadows like so. And we'll do probably two applications of that, possibly three, but no way to tell until we do it. So there's the first application. That dry, it's dry. We're gonna go back again. Some, get some water, smooth that out. There you go. Now we've got some shadows in there. I don't feel too bad about highlighting up. What is my weapon of choice? It's the best brush on the planet, the Da Vinci Maestro Series 10 size one. It's the only brush I use. Literally, you guys want spoilers? Hold on, I gotta make sure I can show this bad part of my desk. There it is. Look at that. You see all these brand new brushes? <laughs> Focus camera. What is, wait a minute. Hey, look at those. Look at those boys. Look, there's, there's the rest of them, but. All right, make sure we're in focus for you. There you go, okay. All right, so I like that on the shirt. So I'm just gonna mix this down a little bit and go back over it and we'll work up our color. And yeah, the thing that makes the Da Vinci the best brush isn't its point, which the point is good. Works really well. Um, but it's the way that it actually holds the paint and releases it. Since I'm somebody that paints very, very, very thin and very, very wet, right? It's like dirty paint water whenever I am painting. Uh, since this is a very high quality watercolor brush, it works best for, for most people that uh, paint that way. Which is interesting, right? Like a lot of people don't, don't think about the fact that the sort of like most popular painting brushes uh, that aren't specifically for miniature painting, right? So if you're buying a, a paintbrush that's advertising to you as a miniature painter, um, typically not the style that you'll see, um, but all the, the world's best and most popular are all watercolor brushes in general, which is funny because people don't really think about that. All right, so now, just that maiden flesh straight up across the bottom. Around the collar, which the lip of that collar is very faint, but I'll accentuate it by highlighting up right underneath it like this. So that doesn't actually exist right there, that's just freehand. But it makes it look like we've got a collar on the shirt, so very nice. 
Okay. Working our way through nicely here. All right, so let's work on the face. So I'm gonna take three colors here to make the skin tone that I would like to have. So I'm gonna do intense brown. I'm gonna do some of the uh, maiden flesh and then some of our orange brown. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the orange brown. Let's go to new palette land over here. Da Vinci 10, the 35 is just too long. Too long, too skinny. Doesn't load the paint the same way. If you're somebody that paints with thick paint uh, and you don't do thin painting the way that I do or, or like wet palette work, stuff like that, the 35 is probably fine. Um, but yeah, specifically for the way that I paint, it just isn't gonna do it. So there you go, you can see the color that we got mixed here. We'll go ahead and apply that all over the mini. Because yeah, trust me, I've, I've bought the 35s to test those. I've tested probably six different types of DaVinci brushes all the way down to the minis, to the retouch, to everything. The retouch brushes are the crazy ones. I don't know if I still have any. I think I tossed them all. Let me see if I have a retouch brush. No, I don't. But I thought those would do well because they have such a short bristle and they use the same ferrule, but that's not really what was doing it for us. So I'm just making sure I have nice coverage on the face before we do anything else. Make sure we get the neckline there. Easy peasy. Yeah, remember, you can always see all the supplies that I use on Amazon. You can go to minipainting.studio, click, click on the Amazon link. Or you can do uh, in the chat, exclamation point, Josh's things with an apostrophe S on my name, and it will give you the link to all the different supplies that I use. And I get like three pennies if you buy something, so big, big thank you. It does make a difference when, when a lot of you do that for your purchasing. That's a big, huge help for me. I can buy cat food, masks, you name it. So it definitely helps me out. All right, getting the rest of the hand there. This hand over here, the shotgun hand, the, the hand that waves hello with Bertha. Okay, so we got that rocking and rolling. I will go ahead and make a wash out of the Wyvern Brown because I feel like that's the reddest color that we have and that's always what I like to, I always like to give a red tint to my skin when I can. We don't really have any better option here. If you're at home, if you're at home, do Rust Brown, but if you've got that color. But we'll go ahead and use this. This will work out just fine, I can tell already. The reason I didn't push, oops, well, okay. The reason I didn't push the uh, skin tone all the way to the end of that shirt collar is because I knew the wash would end up running next to it anyway. Get the hand here. Okay. So we're gonna let that dry before we start moving back. Highlighting up the skin. I don't really know what color to do for the hair, so let's, um, I'm just gonna get Noir Black and we'll mix it in with probably the Wyvern leather color and we'll just make a very super duper dark brown. That's, that's probably our, our easiest option here. We need a bit of dark. We'll probably do black shoes. Because the suitcase will be black. His hair will be super dark brown and the shoes will be black and it'll probably give us enough contrast for the whole paint job. Most likely. Yep, there we go. Yeah, that skin tone will work out just fine. Especially highlighting up with our previous skin tone up to Maiden Flesh. All right, and do we 
little loose bang right there. There we go. All right, so we got that base coated. Let me go back. See, I'll take this color actually and um, we'll, we'll base coat the shoe and then we'll just wash the shoe down. We'll do all of this actually. We'll do the we'll do all the easy peasy parts. Okay. So where's uh we just need boop, boop, boop. okay we got all right we got a couple things actually we'll do this first because it makes sense. So I'm gonna grab hone steel, <clears throat> get some hone steel out there, put some shine on Bertha. Okay, we got that. Like the worm of the jacket. And actually uses Da Vinci 35s as well. She's got a mix. Because she was the one that I had the conversation with the 35 with initially, like a year or so ago. And because um, it was, you know, she knew, we were talking about the differences right between the 35 and the 10. And for her, the fact that she does uh, well palettes and works with a little bit thicker paint. Uh, the the ten the thirty five works best for her right it allows you to be a little bit more accurate as you're applying those layers and it doesn't pull the paint up as much as a series ten <clears throat> but for me I need I needed to pull the paint up more and that's why the series ten works best all right so we've got that I just did the handle. Then, let's do the little wheels down here, the wheels on the bus. I know some of my primer got knocked off right there. It's not too big of a deal. It won't be the end of the world. All right, so now we just need some Noir Black. We'll be using this for the next couple of tricks. So I'm just gonna give it its own little, own little plot of land down here on the palette. Some water there. That looks good to me. Like a nice little black wash. First thing I'm gonna do is let's do is this dry yet? I don't necessarily trust it, so we'll do it over the hair. Same thing on Bertha. Hopefully she's dry. If not, that's an oopsie, but looks like we're okay. And what we're applying right now is pretty pigmented, but it's okay, because we'll just, we'll just highlight it all up. No big deal. And we're already using, you know, relatively stark contrast for this painting anyway today. Add a little bit more water, and then I'll just straight on top of the xenothermal. I want to do it on the suitcase. There we go. Let's see, I'm gonna add a little bit more pigment. Is this Christmas music? Oh my gosh, you guys, they... They officially have Christmas music already on, on streaming music platforms. Okay, hold on. It hasn't even, we're not even through, we're not even through Halloween yet, guys. How are they trying to push that on us? Nope. What do we got here? Is this how that works? There we go. Especially since I know we'll be listening to that forever and ever.
All right, so we've got this. Looking good. So we're just gonna let all that dry. Let's go back to our skin. Oh, wait, the shoes. The shoes. I'm gonna run some color on those. And then, just, just for giggles here, we're obviously not doing basing or anything, but I'll just reset it, make it nice and dark. That'll let all of our other work kinda show up more here on the mini. It already works, you can tell they're on camera. This would be a good stage anyway for you to repaint the, the base black or the rim of it black if you haven't started the basing portion. All right, cool. Do it. Do it. Okay. Just going back to that color we based the skin with. It's dried up on the wet palette enough for me to have a nice little layering consistency with it. Where we are, there we go. Added a little bit more water. Let's get on in there. Now I like this face. This is a good face for painting. Start off with the ooh, top of the nose, and then the tear duct. Top of the cheeks there, down to the side of the mouth. Pulling from underneath the cheek, down to the side of the face like so. Oops. And then, because of the way the face is shaped, go ahead and do right up underneath, ooh, where are we? Right up underneath the nose, like that. This side of the face. Corner of the mouth there. And then pulling from underneath the cheekbone there in the shadow, down to the corner of the face. Do that again. See how nice that looks though? It's so easy. So easy peasy, look at that. We're already setting up the light and shadow there. Look how good that looks though, right? It's just, it's like the structure of this space gives you this perfect lighting environment to kind of just set up everything. So shout out, shout out to the Chronoscope Minis for the for people that haven't given them enough love. Really good paint jobs just waiting to happen. All right, then let's go ahead and do our hands here. Gonna get the phalanges. That's kind of weird. I feel like that's like a that's a mold thing going on there. But it's okay. All right, more maiden flesh. Same color, same bat channel. We're just going in for round two here. Just highlighting up gently. I'm gonna mix this down slightly. Where's this color over right here? There we go. That helps a lot. All right, back to this color. Yeah. 
All right, so that looks good to me. So we'll do the hands. See where are we at? Right at about an hour, really. <laughs> I tried to set, I tried to milk this one today, guys. Simple paint jobs. It's all right. We'll we'll keep it. We'll we'll keep some stuff going on. We still got all the weapons, the back, the uh, suitcase, all the weapons. He only has one weapon. He only got Bertha. But for an hour paint job. I'd say we're looking good. Not bad. Okay, so let's do, I'm gonna actually need to highlight this up more. All right, right up in there. Should be a bit brighter, right? Cool. Do exclamation point Josh's things with an apostrophe, I'm pretty sure. Is that how that works? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty sure. All right, so I'm gonna take the wyvern color, a little bit brighter. We're gonna do some, some fake wood grain here on the weapon. Let me zoom in. There you go, thank you. Justin with the layup. I have to do it here, because I promise I can't do it in real life. <laughs> okay. So you can see I'm just taking my brush and I'm not really applying anything like all over. I'm just kind of setting up areas to do fake wood grain. It's very small. Give it a shot, right? It's not like you're it's not like you're trying to convince us of a, a whole tree trunk here. Let me redo my uh there we go. That side's dark enough, I don't really care. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna keep highlighting this up. I'm gonna add a little bit of the orange into that. There we go. We're just gonna keep building up this wood grain texture. Like so. Man, for a uh, prime day, the lights that I used were on like super clearance. That still shocked me. They were like 50 bucks. Cheapest they've ever been. I know a lot of people bought them the last time they were on sale. All right, so now, top here. And you can see the wood grain really is as simple as just a broken up striated pattern, right? It's not anything insane. Doesn't have to be even, doesn't have to be anything. You just need to have that varied, varied texture. And it will, it'll look like a nice wooden barrel. We can even do some on the side here. If we can get, if we can think, think thin enough here. Let's get close. Let's get close. Does that work? I think that I think that looks like some wood grain. I'm gonna go a little bit lower. Tip of my brush just dried on me. That's fun. Doctor Rhino in the chat. That's another another name I haven't seen before. I hope you're doing good today. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna darken this a little bit. Like I was saying. I feel like the mold, um, it's kind of like an undercut, right? Like this is an area that is having problems because this shouldn't have been up as much. The hand, there you go, see? That should have been darker right there. I'm gonna get more. I'm gonna get a little bit more right up against the thumb there. Just 
just need to darken that up. There we go. There we go. That looks better. Let's bounce out of that. Let's bounce out of that. Okay. All right, look at him. He's trying to survive. He's trying to survive. Okay. Now then, taking our Noir Black, I'm going to add some of the Maiden Flesh down here in this part of the neighborhood. And I'm going to start highlighting things up a little bit here. And I'm not doing a from the top highlight just because of the structure of this. So you can see I'm, I'm highlighting up the bottom. So like the edges and then the bottom of the different sections. Of his, of his little apocalypse to me bag here. This one I'm just following kind of my light source. So I'm gonna pull it to the top right and then down to the bottom left there. That way it looks like it has Justin's decapitated head bulging around in there. You don't want it to look like a flat surface because unless it's a hard shell, which which we know only true psychopaths fly with hard shell suitcases, uh, we want this to be a little bit shapely. That's funny, because I think that's that's literally all I've ever flown with. Like I said, that's why we have Justin's head inside the suitcase today. <laughs> <coughs> Making the apocalypse better. One person at a time. No, I'm a I'm a fan of the big duffel bag. I'm trying to think. The only time I ever had a issue with a suitcase was um, when one got lost from Love Field to New York, and that was that was an issue. And I get that was the same flight out of Love Field that I got food poisoning on the second we took off. <laughs> oh my god! Sounds like you had a fun time. Dude, it was amazing. The poor stewardess, man. She was like, all right, someone's going to trade seats with you so you can be right by the bathroom. I was like, oh my God, thank you. It was funny because I like, called her over. I was like, hey, again, they were about, they were like taking off, you know, they were getting ready to do it. I'm like, hey, the second we take off, can I immediately go to the bathroom? And she was like, no, you have to stay seated if you can. Da, da, da. And I'm like, I literally have food poisoning right now. It just hit. It's what I just ate in the, you know, like whatever food court area at the airport. And she goes, oh, yeah, okay, I, yeah, I'll come get you here in a second. I was like, okay, thank you. But literally, I was like sweating bullets, feeling like I was going to die pretty much the entire flight to New York City. And then by the time we landed, I felt fine. Like, I finally felt good after hours and hours, right? And then we immediately get in an Uber, and the Uber driver's driving so insane through the uh, tunnel um, that I immediately got sick again. I was like, okay, we got to stop. And then um, we went and had some couple of dollar slices of pizza which will cure any medical condition for the most part this is not a conspiracy stream so i'm not giving you medical advice Ooh, where'd but, you have them from any of the uh, well-known places uh yeah i mean literally whatever the that family that just owns the majority of them on like the east side of manhattan and uh we were staying because the apartment that we had was on first and 31st um which is literally right on the water as as far east as you can go and uh I felt cured, it was great. But yeah, it was just like every, all these little things that we had to do would like trigger the the wooziness again for like the rest of the day. But that one was a, that was a pretty good uh, life lesson. Do not eat Duncan before you hop on a plane.
Hey, Twisted. We're doing okay. I've got a tree that's about to fall in the backyard. <laughs> and it's gotten way darker. And we're doing okay. We haven't had the power go out in the middle of the stream or anything, which is what I was sort of afraid of. Power's been off and on so far today, but it's tonight that's going to be the real issue. That's the only thing I'm not 100% happy about. We don't have gas in this house. So if the power goes out, we can't cook. And we gonna be cold, man. I mean, I guess we could we could all huddle into the uh, <clears throat> put the pets in the like guest guest bathroom and turn on the shower really hot, right, and warm up that room and then do the same in the master bedroom. But you know, hey, don't worry, I'll I'll snuggle your cats for warmth. I'll, I'll fall on that sword. Fall on the sword for my first of all. How dare you insinuate that it's some kind of chore? to get to cuddle with Tally and Arthur, first of all. That already just shows that there's a reason why you fly with a hard hard shell uh, suitcase. And and second of all, I'm offended that you would go for them first and not the star of the show. Like, you should be doing everything you can to keep me alive and, and happy so that we can continue Miniature Mondays, at, you know, peacefully. Because, I mean, you, this is already... We're going to have... There's going to be something in the writer now, right, with the show that, that in case of emergency, you have to cuddle me. Like, that's the focus. <laughs> the focus should be me, not the cats. But in a world where, you know, I don't have to worry about anything like that, then sure. I mean, yeah, you can you can hang out with the cats, but... I just, I love the idea of driving up there to, to just snuggle Arthur, though. It sounds amazing. I mean, people would pay. When he got, so when he got out of the house, it, it really was like... I was amazed, but at the same time, not necessarily totally surprised. But like my old roommate, immediately, the second they found out that he was gone, they were like, we can get a hotel room, we can come up there and help. Like immediately they're like, we will come find Arthur. You know what I mean? Like anybody that gets to meet that cat is like, I understand what's going on. We must protect him at all costs. And we're highlighting up our wheelies. I'm gonna uh, wash the center, or the glaze the center of that. It's kind of hard to figure out how to paint the extendable handle there. And then we got Bertha. Bertha and her barrels. This song is so weird because, so I let this play the other day and it it's in, the audio actually stops. It's just super annoying, that's it. <laughs> it. So the way that the service that I pay for works with the music or whatever, um, like anything that plays, I have a license for, but their, their system is like, you can, you can filter stuff that has lyrics, stuff that doesn't have lyrics, the genre, the mood, whatever you want, right? They have all these settings and I always have it set to vocals. So this, every time that little intro part plays, I get like so mad immediately. Cause I'm like, who is this person? I'm not trying to listen to this. I'm sorry, but luckily it's only a little five second stint. Maybe we just pretend there's like a... I'm just gonna keep adding Noir Black to this. And I'll just shade it from the bottom up, I guess. I don't know. This is the most challenging part of the paint job is figuring out, there you go. Okay, that's cool. That's cool, we can hang with that. Okay, well, <laughs> there you go. An hour and 15 minutes, pretty much. I don't really know what else uh, to do. I guess uh, we'll highlight up his hair. That's what we're missing. And then that's it. We're rocking and rolling with this Survivor. I, I, I really like the way this looks. Um, obviously, we spent ample time on the clothing, right? Everything else like that. Um, anytime you have a much simpler paint job, and when it comes to steampunk or uh, like pulp or occult or modern, whatever it is, if it isn't fantasy stuff for the most part, um, those miniatures are a lot easier to paint. Uh, just on general principle of them being, uh, you know, they're not wearing a bunch of different elaborate things and armor and jewelry and bags and anything like that, right? It's, it's a lot easier to uh, sort of digest whenever you paint them. But I was glad we were able to get a modern theme uh, Miniature Monday kit out this year. That was a lot of fun. And then remember, of course, as of like, you know, 20 minutes into the stream, uh, you can now purchase the November Cyber Police kit. And uh, I know we showed off the Christmas kit last time as well, or the holiday kit, whatever. Either way, I know a lot of people are excited about that too. They, you guys weren't expecting uh, evil penguins as the antagonist, so that'll be a lot of fun. 
and that will round out can you believe it a year of miniature man how much has changed in a year though like that's that's what's crazy to me or even so like this this was when actually we were first planning uh the miniature monday stuff was it i remember it was in october of 2019 so it's crazy to think that we're moving our way through but yeah i'm gonna add a little bit more white here to the hair and we'll do our final little highlight you can see who he brought up i just used the side of the brush and over brushed those details on and we'll do the top of this section here where the part exists like that that'll help you know he's got like wavy hair he's got that wavy comb over action going on How much has changed? Well, the entire world has changed, Chewy. The entire world has changed, Chewy. All right. I think that's it. I think we did it. Case closed. Case closed. On our zombie kit. Definitely pleased. I think this guy looks great. He definitely puts off a... Uh, Sneaking in the apocalypse vibe. What more could you want? That's pretty much it. Remember, check out all the stuff we got going on on Patreon last weekend. At the Scholar Plus tier, we painted up this fun miniature. We did some OSL on her weekend. Two weekends before that, we did her counterpart here. We, had, we, we tried to do a theme this month in general of the Andromedans. That was fun. These are paint alongs that we do on Patreon. And then tomorrow, we're going to be finishing up this sculpt. So that's a lot of fun. This is the Atelier project we have going on currently. Uh, I always enjoy them. Last week was the week that uh, we really had a lot of progress happen on that paint job. So definitely looking forward to that. And uh, that's pretty much it for me. Uh, but Justin, do you have any uh, news, any issues, any grievances, any congratulations? Uh, anything for us? Uh, no, actually I do not. Um, I think next, let me clarify here real quick. Um, yes, next Wednesday is the premiere of the, uh, I'm not gonna call it the Luca show, but the, sh the show with Luca in it on our channel, since it's, uh, we kind of pushed a lot of the stuff out quick since we were getting hung up on the studio and everything else, so it's, uh, Untitled Luca Show next Wednesday. Okay. Um, what else is there? The studio, hopefully. I know we keep talking about this, but we were supposed to move in like last Monday or Monday before, and today we were supposed to get the final inspection done, where it's like, you know, gives us the all clear. But there's no telling. It's that a lot of stuff like that gets buried in uh, bureaucracy, so it's it's hard to say um, whether or not we'll actually be moving in sometime soon. <clears throat> um, but outside of that, I don't think I have anything special to update people on yet not yet we have some some stuff coming up but i can't really talk about any of it yet i want to but i can't okay well i won't ruin it i almost ruined it just then but i decided not to <laughs> so um all right well do we do we have a, a do we have a target for our harassment well, or let's see here do you want to find one for us actually i know you like choosing yeah so let's do dun, 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 dun. um oh is this guy english and french oh let's throw let's throw some love at a, a frenchman over here so d-e-k-f-l-o deck flow he does speak english it's an english french painter he's got like 13 people watching so let's throw some love awesome. over there um Thank you very much josh to, you got uh yeah the question do you have a twitch channel in, in, that i stream outside of miniature mondays on reaper yeah so i i stream on facebook youtube and twitch all at the exact same time so you can follow me mini painting studio on twitch you can follow me mini painting studio on youtube you can follow me mini painting studio on facebook and you will see all of the streams and content that i do in case you didn't know so that's it for me get this rate going here uh say hello to deck flow for us say bonjour bonjour and uh 
Stay warm, Josh. And anyone else who is uh, near Josh and the kind of the uh, frozen zone. Actually, if there's other areas of the country that are also frozen, stay warm, folks. Right. Um, spread the Reaper love. Keep being awesome. And once again, thank you for starting your week with us. The best way to start Mondays. Let's be honest. Wow, what a great catchphrase. I hope you guys find $20 in your pocket and everything goes your way. See you later. See you guys later.